Welcome dear learners, my name is Dr. Smith Prasad and I welcome you in this session on concepts of revenues, marginal revenues, average revenue and total revenue. In the previous sessions we have discussed about demand, supply, velocity of demand and now proceeding further on this topic of microeconomics for business, we will be discussing about revenues. As the name suggests, what is revenue? The revenue is the total uh, total earnings of a firm or total earning of a production unit by selling a particular amount of units at a particular price. Now before uh, proceeding toward the concept of revenues, let me explain you about markets. What are markets and what are different types of markets? Market is a place where exchange of goods and services takes place between a seller and a buyer. It means market is a place where a seller and a buyer came together for exchange of goods and services in lieu of something that's something which which we known as money money can be of any form now different type of markets are perfect competitive market and imperfect competitive market uh, the markets are generally classified into two categories the first category is perfect competitive market and another category is imperfect competitive market as the name suggests perfect competitive market is a market in which there are various number of different number of a large number of players that are providing same type of goods and services in the market as a result of which a product which is a product is available by uh, made available to a consumer by various number of entities various number of form which provides which provides a option to a consumer that the consumer can consume a particular product from firm A, firm B, firm C, firm D or any n number of firm this generally takes place when a when a product is of homogeneous nature it means that every product is a completely replaceable product of another means all the products are same similar and they perform same function as a result of which in this imperfect uh, in this perfectly competitive market there is a infinite elasticity of demand which i have explained you early in the earlier session that uh, sometimes a situation occurs when the elasticity of demand is an infinite infinite elasticity of demand why is it so is it so because it is a perfectly competitive market in a perfectly competitive market if a firm tries to change the price of a commodity then what does consumer do they shift from commodity a to commodity b or c or d or e so it means that if there would be any variation in the price then the quantity demanded of the commodity will change immediately this is known as perfectly elastic market now the second type of market is imperfect competitive market the imperfect competitive market is again subdivided into uh, three categories uh, which are imperfect competitive market pure oligopoly market and differentiated oligopoly market and the another type of market is monopoly market now let me let me explain all these types of market to you the first one is monopolistic competitive market it is a market in which there are various numbers of firms available in the market these firms provide substituting products of uh, one another but they are a bit differentiated from one another it means that the products can be used as a substituting good for a for b for c for d but they they have some differentiation among them for example if we say that we want to purchase a cell phone, a mobile phone or a smartphone then every company is providing you a smartphone means all cell phones or smartphones are performing the same function but they are having some unique feature as a result of which some people want to buy product A some people want to buy product B, C, D, E, F and this is how a monopolistic competitive market uh, takes place in this type of market the elasticity is very large and uh, and the next type of market is in a pure oligopoly market there uh, there is a uh, there is a homogeneity among the product and the firms are very few firms as a result of which these few firms are providing homogeneous product as i have explained you in the uh, previous type of market which is perfect competitive market that the product are homogeneous product in the similar manner in this pure oligopoly market the product are again homogeneous market homogeneous product but there is a difference between perfect competitive market and pure oligopoly market that 
in the perfect competitive market there are large number of uh, suppliers whereas in the case of pure oligo poly market the suppliers or the firms are very few firm as a result of it the price elasticity of demand is very small and and uh, proceeding further the differentiated oligo poly market is some or less similar to pure oligo poly market but the difference between pure and differentiated is the nature of product in pure oligo poly market the product is homogeneous type of product whereas in case of differentiated oligo poly market the product is a differentiated product and again the product is a substituting substitution for a or b or c but again they are having some dis distinct or unique feature which are uh, which are differentiating first product to second product and to third product and again the price elasticity or demand for this product is very small and the last type of market is monopoly market now what is monopoly market as the name suggests in this in this type of market there is a monopoly of a supplier the supplier can be a single supplier there can be a cartel of supplier who who came together and creates creates a market which seems like to be a monopoly market now as the name suggests monopoly monopoly means there is a supplier who is selling a particular product in this situation the product is a unique product and supplier is just a single supplier as a result of which the price is determined by the supplier and it affect the price elasticity of demand in a very small manner so these are different type of market now proceeding further with our uh, with the concept of revenues the revenues uh, the revenues has three major components which are total revenue average revenue and marginal revenue as the name suggests total revenue total revenue can be calculated as total revenue is a calculation of total quantity multiplied by price of price per unit it means that when a firm wants to calculate its total revenue how how the total revenue can be calculated it just have to identify the total quantity sold by the particular uh, entity or business entity and per unit price or per piece price when per piece price when they multiply these two variables then the then the figure that we identify is known as total revenue and the next term which is very important in, in the concept of revenue is average revenue average revenue so how we calculate average revenue see as the name says this is uh, average of the revenue means the total revenue that has been earned by a firm when we divided by total revenue by total number of units sold by that company then the figure that we uh, that we uh, obtain is known as average revenue it means that total revenue when divided by the price sorry when the total revenue is divided by the total quantity sold then the figure that we receive that we obtain is known as average revenue then there arises a question that these two phenomena seem similar to one another see there is total revenue here there is total revenue here there is total quantity here there is total quantity here there is total quantity here but here it is price and here it is average revenue so there there arises a question that are average revenue and price they both are the same phenomena or they are different things now see let me explain you there are two types of situation the first situation is of perfect competitive market and the another situation is imperfect competitive market that i have uh, that i have uh, explained you in the uh, in this session only now in a perfect competitive market what we say we say that uh, let me explain you first uh, imperfect competitive market in a imperfect competitive market now let me explain you with an example let's suppose there is a situation when we say that a firm is producing 10 units of a set uh, firm is producing or selling 10 units of a particular unit uh, of a particular commodity at a price of 15 rupees per unit then the total revenue earned by that particular firm is say 150 rupees means 15 rupees at the rate of 15 rupees total unit sold is 10 which makes it a total of 150 so this is the total revenue that a firm is obtaining now say suppose there is a situation when we say that a seller is selling a particular product at a at a at a rate of rupees 15 so one unit if one unit will be sold then the total revenue would be 15 say suppose the seller says that he will he will be selling the next unit at a rate of 
it means that the first unit is sold at a rate of rupees one. The second unit, not two unit, the second unit is sold at a rate of rupees fourteen, and and the third unit is sold at a rate of third unit is sold at a rate of rupees thirty, which makes it a total of. Fourteen, which makes it a total of forty-two. And in the first case, if we say that the seller is selling fifteen rupees per unit, and the total units sold are three, then it makes it a total of fifteen multiplied by three is equal to forty-five. Now see, there is a difference between total revenue in case one and case two. For case one, the total revenue is forty-five, and for case two, the total revenue is rupees forty-two. So if we will be calculating average revenue for this case two. The average revenue would be calculated as rupees forty-two divided by three, and for this first situation, average revenue would be calculated as rupees forty-five divided by three, which makes it a sum of uh, which makes it a total of rupees fifteen. It means that average revenue is equal to price is equal to fifteen. But for this situation, average revenue would be forty-two divided by three. It means that it is forty. For this situation, average revenue is equal to price is equal to fifteen. Whereas in this situation, price is rupees fifteen for first unit, rupees fourteen for second unit, and rupees thirteen for third unit, which makes the average revenue a figure of rupees fourteen. It means that average revenue is less than the first, uh, than the price of the first unit, and it is more than the price of first uh, third unit. And this is how, this is why we say that in a market condition. Which is a perfectly competitive market. The average revenue will always equals to price, and uh, and in an imperfect competitive market, in this situation this situation can arise. Now let me explain you the concept of marginal revenue. As the name is indicating, marginal revenue means the margin, the contribution, the net net extra revenue earned by selling of an additional unit. Now let me explain how this uh, how this variable is functioning over here. Say suppose we are selling ten units of a particular commodity. We are selling ten units of a particular commodity. See, we denote units by U at a rate of rupees fifty. So the total revenue will be rupees one hundred and fifty. Rupees one hundred and fifty rupees. So this is our total revenue. This is our total revenue. Now we have understood the phenomena of demand. When we are when we are uh, when we are drawing the demand curve, we have understood that when the quantity of a commodity is falling, then the uh, when the price of a particular commodity is falling, then the quantity demanded of this commodity is increasing. It means that if we want to sell additional units, we have to reduce the price, or the market will force us to reduce the price of a particular commodity so that we can sell more and more units. As a result of which, if we say that we want to sell eleven units. So it forces us to reduce the price of a particular commodity, and the price has been reduced to fourteen rupees per unit as a result of which eleven units has been sold in the market. Now see, these are eleven units and these are ten units. Now the total revenue would be rupees one hundred and fifty-four. Rupees one hundred and fifty-four. It means that it means that there is a change of one unit. See, eleven minus ten, that yani means. There is a change of one unit, as a result of which there is a change of rupees four. So we say that the additional increase in the revenue, which is of rupees four unit, caused by and selling of an additional unit of a particular commodity is known as its marginal revenue. So this is the marginal revenue of the of this particular commodity. Now we have explained the phenomena of total revenue. Average revenue and marginal revenue. Now, for a perfectly competitive market, we have I have already discussed you about this. For a perfectly competitive market, there is a situation where we say that average revenue is equals to marginal revenue is equals to horizontal horizontal demand curve. It means that elasticity is infinite, which we have explained in the uh, in the unit of elasticity of demand. Now, see how we prepare that graph for the demand curve. It is a horizontal line where price elasticity is equals to average revenue is equals to marginal revenue. This is the situation. 
Whereas in the case of an imperfectly competitive market, average revenue is not equals to marginal revenue, and that we will be discussing in further in this session. The relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue in an imperfectly competitive market. Now see, as I have explained you this situation that if we are selling a particular commodity or if we are reducing a price of a particular commodity, that is uh, it is affecting that is it is affecting the quantity demanded of that particular commodity. For example, if we say quantity sold of a particular commodity, price of that particular commodity, and marginal revenue of that particular commodity. Now, how these uh, how these variables are functioning? Now we are understanding this relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue in an imperfectly competitive market. Now we are explaining it uh, with this example. See, this is quantity, price. We say that price and average revenue are the same thing. Price or average revenue, marginal revenue, and the another uh, revenue which was which we are studying is total revenue. So let me consider it here only. Total. revenue and marginal revenue we say that in a in a market the demand of a particular commodity is affected by the price of that particular commodity it means that a demand curve which is a demand curve for a particular customer it is a average revenue curve for a supplier because at a particular point of time at a particular price at a particular price a buyer is ready to buy a particular product and the seller is selling that particular product in the market it means that a price and demand relationship or price and quantity relationship is existing in a similar manner where uh, it was as i have calculated this average revenue for you so both the figures are the same thing because at the time of calculating average revenue what we have calculated the figure that we have identified is a price figure and that price figure is functioning in the demand curve only and that's why we say that the demand curve for a customer is a average revenue curve for a supplier so now if we say that a price of a particular commodity is say rupees 16 and the quantity demanded of that particular commodity is 1 as a result of which the total revenue would be 16 and the marginal revenue would be 16 now with the increase or with the decrease with the increase in quantity or decrease in price see when price decreases quantity will be quantity will increase as a result of which price say suppose has been reduced to 15 as a result of the quantity demanded has been increased so the quantity demanded has been increased to 2 now the total revenue figure would be 15 to the 30 now how do we calculate this marginal revenue marginal revenue would be calculated by the contribution made by the last unit and the last unit is this second and the unit that we have added here additionally and for calculating marginal revenue what do we have to do we have to subtract this figure the previous total revenue from the current uh, the current total revenue means 30 minus 16 which makes it a figure of 40 now again when the price when there is a drop in price say the price has been reduced to 40 and the quantity demanded has been increased to 3 as a result of which total revenue again changes it has been total revenue has been increased to 42 and again the marginal revenue has been reduced and now the figure of marginal revenue is 42 minus 30 which makes it 12 so see we can find out over here with the decrease in price there is a increase in quantity there is a increase in total revenue but there is a decrease in marginal revenue so when we plot this entire figure in a uh, in a graphical manner then we receive then we can then we can find out that the graph that is visible to us is see this is quantity and this is price so what we have seen we have seen that average revenue is falling marginal revenue is falling and total revenue is increasing so at a particular point of time if you plot a curve which we say that is a demand curve so we know that demand curve and average revenue curve are the same thing so this is a average revenue curve or it is a demand curve so 
in this example the average revenue curve is falling from left to right and in the similar manner marginal revenue curve is also falling from left to right but the question arises that what is the relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue on the basis of which these curves are moving in downward direction and for that we have to proceed further in this section and you can see uh, in the slide that this graph is taking place and how we are plotting this graph and how we are calculating these figure of average revenue and marginal revenue and total revenue at a particular point of time see this is the place where the value of marginal revenue is zero and beyond that marginal revenue is converting is going into negative quadrant it means that beyond this point the value of marginal revenue is negative and beyond this point the value of average revenue is negative but but the but the figure of total revenue is not negative here it is again in positive direction and which you can see uh, in the uh, in the representation that that in the handouts which are available with this section now proceeding further now i'm telling you about there are two types of market this is explanation exists for the perfect, uh, imperfect competitive market now what what would be the case when the market would be a perfect competitive market now say we have, uh, we have said that in a perfect competitive market there is no change in the price as a result of which the price remains constant so the price earlier was rupees 16 for first quantity again the price would be 16 for second quantity again the price would be 16 for three quantities which makes it a revenue of 16 which makes it a revenue of 32 and likewise in the similar manner this is uh, this is total revenue and in the similar manner when we when we will be calculating this marginal revenue in this case marginal revenue is 16 again marginal revenue is 16 and it remains constant throughout this process now this is how perfect market uh, perfect competitive market exists so when we plot a graph for this perfect competitive market what do we receive we obtain that we obtain that in a perfect competitive market when price and quantities are there now we see we have remember that the graph for this is a horizontal line it is a horizontal line where we have drawn this price elasticity of demand is equals to price of the commodity price of the commodity is equals to average revenue is equals to marginal revenue and this we have seen with the in this particular example so this is the difference between relationship between this is the difference between the relationship of average revenue and marginal revenue in a perfect competitive market and imperfectly competitive market now proceeding further with this uh, with this uh, relationship let me explain with the question that we have uh, raised over there that what is the what is the point of intersection between average revenue and marginal revenue the point where average revenue curve and marginal revenue curve intersects each other now we are explaining this relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue that what is the relationship between this average revenue and marginal revenue intersection point now see in this particular graph it is visible that when we see, uh, when we talk about total revenue how do we calculate total revenue total revenue is a multiplication of total quantity sold multiplied by price of that particular quantity now this is the price axis this is quantity axis and if we if we say that this is quantity axis if we say that what would be the total revenue of uh, of this uh, graph then we say that om multiplied by ob uh, makes it a total of the total revenue that this firm is receiving now we also know that apart from this if we submit the entire marginal revenue then what we the, the, then the figure that we receive would also be a figure of total revenue so we say that for this particular region the total revenue in this situation is omab this is a total revenue if we multiply quantity with price but we also so also say that the total revenue can be calculated as the entire summation of marginal revenue which is o m q c and d c this is this region so this so upon submitting this region will be, uh, the figure that we'll receiving is total revenue so in this situation what we say this 
this area is constant for both the cases but the difference between but the area which is different in this situation is this and this but when we say that this triangle tri uh, this this square o m a b o m a b is equals to o m q d when these two figures are equal and this area is common then we say that the region d b c is equals to c a q means triangle d b c is equals to c a c a q it means that these two triangles are equal triangles now these two are opposite angles it means that these angles are equal these two angles are 90 degree angle it means that these two angles are equal when the two angles are equal then the third angle are also equal now we have received a situation where we said this, these two triangles are similar triangle and all the angles are equals it means that these two triangle these two triangles are are concurrent triangles and when these two triangles are concurrent triangle then it means that bc is equals to ca and db is equals to aq and dc is equals to cq so the situation arises here is bc equals c bc equals ca as a result of this we can conclude that the marginal revenue curve is intersecting this the region of average revenue curve at the midpoint here see this bc is equals to ca means this line is equals to this line and this is how the relationship between this average revenue and marginal revenue curve occurs now proceeding further with the relationship between average revenue marginal revenue and price elasticity let me explain this graph further with you now see in the previous uh, in, uh, in the previous part of this session we have explained that this point of intersection c it is a midpoint of this p and r it means that pc is equals to cr now we know the fact that price elasticity of demand calculating the price elasticity of demand at a particular point on this demand curve see this is a average revenue curve and average revenue curve is the same which is a demand curve and is same which is a price it denotes price now see when we say that this demand curve the price elasticity of uh, the price elasticity of demand in this demand curve at a particular point say suppose we are calculating it at point r so price elasticity over here at this point can be calculated as r d dash r d dash divided by r d so when we divide this value from this value the figure that we receive is known as price elasticity of demand now further see the triangle p the triangle p d r and the triangle r q d dash these two triangle are equiangular triangles see this is a 90 degree triangle this is a 90 degree triangle and this angle is equals to this angle and this angle is equals to this angle it means that these two triangles are equiangular triangle uh, triangles so therefore we can say that r d dash r d dash upon r d is equals to r q see r d dash r q r d d p see e p is equals to r d dash upon r d is equals to r q upon p d now further we have we have already proven that this triangle is a conc this triangle d p c is a concurrent triangle to c r h it means that it means that p d this p d is equals to r h so we can replace this p d with r h over here so the figure that uh, the formula that we have received till now is e p is equals to r dash upon r d equals to r q upon p d equals to r q upon r h now further r h r h can be calculated as as the difference between r q minus h q see so further r h has been explained as r q minus h q now here this is the average revenue curve and this is a marginal revenue curve and r q is the value of average revenue over here so we can rewrite this phrase as we can rewrite this formula as e we are denoting 
प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड विथ ई सो ई इक्वल्स टू एवरेज रेवेन्यू विच इज आर क्यू आर क्यू माइनस एच क्यू एंड एच क्यू इज द वैल्यू ऑफ मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू दैट इज एच क्यू आर सो वी आर डिनोटिंग दिस एच क्यू एस आर सो द फाइनल फिगर द फाइनल फॉर्मूला फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड इज इक्वल्स टू ई इक्वल्स एवरेज रेवेन्यू एट अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट divided by the difference of average revenue and marginal revenue and that is how we can calculate elasticity at a particular point now further we further we know that the fact that at the midpoint of this demand curve the price the value of price elasticity is 1 and uh, and prior to that on the upper side of the particular point the price elasticity is greater than 1 and below this particular point the price elasticity is less than 1 so when we change the value of e over here what we can receive we obtain different values of r and h see this can be calculated as e a minus e r is equals to a now we take a over here e a minus a is equals to e r now a is equals to E minus one equals to E R. So if we want to calculate this marginal revenue, the value of marginal revenue is equals to A, which means which is average revenue multiplied by E minus one divided by E. So the value of marginal revenue, marginal revenue can be calculated as the value of average revenue is equals to price. So we say price multiplied by E minus one divided by E. and this is how we can calculate marginal revenue using price and elasticity of demand the value if there if the value of price elasticity of demand equals to 1 then then the value of marginal revenue would be zero so this is the point this is the point where where the value of marginal revenue is zero when we draw a straight perpendicular line over here then we say that at this point at this point the price elasticity of demand is One, because e minus one is equals to zero. So this is the point on this uh, demand curve when where price elasticity of demand is one, and beyond that it is greater than one, and below that it is less than one. So this is the relationship between average revenue, marginal revenue, and price elasticity of demand. Now, upon understanding average revenue and marginal revenue curves, uh, we have explained the relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue. the last curve which is remaining in this particular section is total revenue curve now see the example the example that i have already shared with you in that example we have seen that the value of average revenue and marginal revenue are changing continuously but the value of total revenue is continuously increasing and as a result of it when we plot this curve of average revenue and marginal revenue what do we found we found that the total revenue curve is continuously increasing and then it was decreasing like this and this is the point see this is the point the peak it is the point where we have seen that the value of marginal revenue is zero so this is the point where price elasticity was one the value of marginal revenue curve is zero and average revenue curve is moving ahead from this particular point so on this curve if i say this is the average revenue curve this is the average revenue curve and this is the point where price elasticity of demand is equals to 1 and at this point the value of marginal revenue is zero and this is the point where the value of total revenue is maximum and beyond that point the value of total revenue starts decreasing and this is how average revenue curve marginal revenue curve and total revenue curve are related to each other so upon completion of this section i believe that you are able to understand the relationship between total revenue marginal revenue average revenue and elasticity of demand apart from that you are able to explain the concept of different types of market that are existing in an economy thank you very much dana have a happy learning